Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Asher Al. Welcome. This is the Starting Million Show. And I'm still not bored of that song. I'm still loving it. I think I'll probably try to find different ways to jive it. Otherwise, you're going to see me keep doing the same thing here and there. So I'm going to find something else. But anyway, I'm again, as usual, excited, 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 exhilarated uh, for my next, for my guest coming up onto the show. Now, a little bit of a background for him, um, or rather how I got to know him was very... Actually, I did not know about his background at all when I first contacted him. I just... Um, message him out of the blue and then just started hey, can we just like meet up and have a chat and we did and guess what i did i blew him off <laughs> i think my very first day that i was supposed to meet him i overslept okay and i, I overslept when i woke up i was like winston i'm so sorry <laughs> i'm so sorry i apologize and then afterwards he was very nice and afterwards he actually uh was kind enough to rearrange another meeting together and we met up and that discussion was very interesting because uh it was meant only for i think uh, it's like supposed to be like a 30 to an hour kind of chat but we ended up talking for about four or five hours okay it was a very long chat because we we found there's so much things that we have in common it's ridiculous how many okay i wouldn't say ridiculous i would think it's probably divine coincidence there's there's so many things that we have in common and uh like for example we we both are into we both both enjoy uh, internet marketing uh we both uh have uh, some some tra similar tragedy that happened very recently at a very very close proximity range that was very uh, mind blowing for me to experience. So anyway, there's a lot of things that we talked about, but that's not what you're here for. We are here actually to find out a little bit about this the story of uh, my next guest that's coming out, and I will explain with to you uh, about what he is. But before that, let's get the well. Let's make an intro rolling. See you in a You can't be loser, set me free. You can't be For my next guest, his name is Winston and uh, he has worked in the family business. I just give a bit of a background. He worked in the family business and he clinched his first quarter million deal in Hong Kong for a building and subsequently he managed to clinch the deal for uh, Patronus Twin Towers KLCC and KRIA Airports but it was lost due to a financial crisis and exchange rate crisis. He has also made six figures from affiliate marketing promoting only one product, which is hosting, and transacted over $18 million in properties in his first year using digital marketing. So my friends, uh, for him, he is a, let me just bring away this picture and just chuckle real quick because very interestingly enough for, for Winston, I'm going to bring it up in a few seconds. Uh, for him, he is a guy that's familiar with the success and also, of course, familiar with the not so happy parts of life in a sense okay so without further ado i'm going to bring on winston okay so winston are you ready in three two one pew hey winston welcome hey, yes, <laughs> hello everyone wow hey thanks for all right. right hey Moto, good to see you Moto. hi and uh Wyman is here as well good to see you bro all right, so we have a couple of people who joined us live. Thank you so much for coming to support. Moto is all the way from the Philippines. Uh, and Moto is an amazing actress. She's a very well-known actress. Waiman is a friend of mine from uh, from primary school. Okay, so very long. He's a, he's a supporter of the show as well. So thanks for coming on and joining us on the show. So Winston, good to have you joining us, man. Hey, thanks for having me here, yeah, sure. Okay, okay. So uh, I think one of the things I usually do is that I like to get in real quick into the, the meet because... Uh, if history is uh, any sign of, you know, uh, indication of future performance in a sense, even though it's not for, for, uh, for in this case, but if it is any kind of indication, our chat might go on for a long time. So let's allow allow me to just go in straight in. Then perhaps we can just find out a little bit more about you. All right. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Sure. Okay. So I just want to find out a little bit about how it gets started. And I think it's also good for everyone to get to know a little bit more about you. So Winston, according to... What we shared, right? I think for the people who've seen the the brief or rather saw, saw the description, you came from a background, right? You let me just pull out the picture again. You came from a background. You were six figures in debt. You had forty four months of imprisonment, and then uh, in the end, you actually resulted in a hundred million in sales, generating that from nothing. Okay, so that was how. But could you just share with everybody or share with me how? First of all, did you actually get? into a four into this six figures and that's because that's a huge number uh and also can you describe what you felt when you were sentenced in into this 44 months of imprisonment 
and of course your experience after you've been re your, uh, after you've been released. So it's a very long question. So we're gonna break it down into parts. So wow, yes, I think this so this is uh, like hours to to answer those questions. <laughs> <laughs> but in a nutshell, um, I I I. I the six figure that wasn't even I uh, I didn't create that the six figure that actually it was my dad it was my my family business it was my family my dad uh who uh well he didn't manage his business well so that's how we end up six figures in debt and that that made uh kind of in a way motivated me to commit to that crime which uh in a sh in short I hacked someone's ClickBank websites now if you know anything about ClickBank. Yeah, so I hacked someone's ClickBank website, uh, took about hundred over thousand dollars, and I was mm -hmm. later on charged forty four months imprisonment. In a nutshell, wow. yeah. And if I could say how I built that hundred million dollar business uh, from scratch, it's a. Uh, to me, I I feel that it's all God's. If you do, if any one of you do believe in God, I believe it's God's. To me, it's God's grace and is and the timing that and the doors that He has opened for me, uh, to walk mm -hmm. through. Now, of course, I put in the work, but I guess if I put in the work and it did not derive with any results, I would not have continued doing it. And if I have not continued doing it, I would not have been able to scale to pass $100 million. So I just want to say that at the end of the day, it's still the, the person behind is still God. Or if, yeah, some of you might say universe or whatever. Yeah, but to me, it's, it's, it's God that has helped me out through, through this time. Yeah. So it's only by his grace that I am where I am today. Mm, okay, okay. So because of that, there was from your parent, your father's side that you have to kind of manage that, and then you want to try to help, and then afterwards you actually committed that crime of uh, of, of yeah. taking money that wasn't yours. So, yeah. so I guess I was just... trying to. I was also trying to. Okay, well, uh, okay. My dad's situation was because he was. Uh, he started a retail business, uh, you know, uh, back in 2000, 2000. And when he started retail business, it was like selling like women's clothing, but it was kind of like older women clothing. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he was selling warehouse and he would advertise on newspapers, hoping that, you know, he didn't want to follow up any, uh, other people like opening up his shopping centers. He was hoping that he would do something. My dad has always been someone who likes to do something different from everyone else. So he thought that, you know what, uh, maybe he's good at picking up clothes. And he, if he sells it at a warehouse, it will be, you know, cheaper operating costs, you know, and mm -hmm. and then, then those in the shopping centers. And then all he does is advertise on newspaper, uh, warehouse sales, and he thinks that people just come and buy. Unfortunately, that business, uh, year after year, for five consecutive years, it was losing money. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but my dad just didn't want to give up. So he tried all kinds of ways. Well, to the extent that we even, uh, we even brought back, uh, he even bought like out of desperation, he bought back from China, like fake Gucci and Prada stuff, mm -hmm. LV bags. Yeah. And he, and he was still boldly advertising like, you know, uh, designer clothes from Milan or whatever. So when people came and they saw <laughs> that it was like, LV and Prada, you know, so that was when the sales started to pick up. But what happened mm -hmm. next was uh, one day, I think some uh, some investigator came. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, of course, you don't know. Yeah, it came. And then one day, we, my dad received a lawyer letter. You know, they have evidence that, that he is uh, he's sold like fake LV products. And he was fined $40,000, which mm -hmm. put him back into red again. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, thank God it was only one bag left on the shelf. So if mm -hmm. there was more than one bag, uh, you know, he would have been fined more. Like one bag is, the fine is 40000 <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yeah. So if there's more bags, it'll be more than that. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So so um, so after that, my dad tried to revive, but unfortunately he had contracted with uh, cancer. Uh, and uh, so I had I was helping him out for a while. And then after a while, my, my brother had to come back from, from, from Australia, from his studies. He wanted to become a filmmaker, but uh, he couldn't. He wanted to stay there permanently and maybe work there. But I think because of my dad's situation, he had no, he had no choice. He had to come back and help as well. Uh, and so I, I told my dad, there's no point for me to do, continue in his business that's losing money. I can contribute even more for family if I did go out and get a job. 
So I, I went out and one of the things that I was doing while I was helping my father, I was doing more like internet marketing. You know, I think what Ash and me have a lot in common. Uh, we started our interest with internet marketing. So I started affiliate marketing uh, in 2002 for me. I remember I bought my first internet marketing course was by this guy called uh, Corey Rudo in 2002. Corey Rudo, yeah. yeah, Corey Rudo. And he met with a car accident, of course, in a sports car. <laughs> and then he passed on. And of course, Derek Yeo took over, uh, which is, I think some of you might know Internet Marketing Center, but those are really old school right now. Uh, the whole internet marketing atmosphere has changed. It's gone now. It's all the young, all the young people right now that are running it on like famous uh, on Instagram, on YouTubers, you know, that in the past, all this did not exist. Yeah. So we used to live in the only the the copywriting world. That's it. There was only copywriting. There was not much of a YouTube or or yeah, marketing and things like that on Instagram or social media marketing. So that's when I started in, in internet marketing. So I started wanting to see who, who can I collaborate with because I realized that it's quite hard to grow as a person. And I didn't know many internet marketers out there. So I wanted to connect with, you know, and see if there's any other local internet marketers in Singapore. So I went mm -hmm. online, I went to Google like internet marketing, Singapore group, community or something like that. I found this guy called Fabian Lim. He left his telephone number. I contacted him and said, hey, maybe you can do some joint venture together. Uh, little mm -hmm. did I realize that he also just started learning about internet marketing. <laughs> and, okay. uh, and he actually paid uh, Johan Monk like 20000 to learn from him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. OG marketers are still here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so anyway so anyway so i, I and and Fabian Lim connected me with with johan mock and even chia because uh because johan mock they were they were having some uh they were pioneers on internet marketing in singapore they were doing a lot of offline seminars and end up uh yeah. Fabian said, hey why don't you come out and help and be the videographer so I thought, yeah i don't mind coming and i attended the three-day course for free and it was the first mm -hmm. time i mean i've Heard people talking about it on email, like you send out email and you get five figures, six figures. I mean, I, I read that a lot in other people's marketers, email and newsletter and their sales letter. But I met uh, Joe Hamok and they were doing it live. So it was a three day workshop, right? The first day they send out email, tomorrow they show the, the results. So, like, live, I know someone personally, at least now, that that really did happen. So I was doing the wow. videography, I was learning a lot. And then after that, I went to make friends with Joe Hamok and Yuncha and said that I was like, uh, reading a lot of internet marketing, you know, I know about Cory Rudo, affiliate marketing. I know a lot about copywriting. I read a lot of Dan Kennedy books on, and also uh, Gary Halbert, all the old school, uh, Gary Vince Vinci, the, you know, uh, all the marketing Benji bullets. Benji Venga. Yeah, Benji Venga. And, uh, and Scott Haynes and uh, quite a few other old school internet marketers, right? And um, so what happened was that I ended up, uh, they ended up offering me a job to work for him. So I thought work for them. Mm -hmm. So, hey, they are the gurus who made millions, you know, in online marketing and they're in Singapore and I get opportunity to work for them. Why not? So I end up working for them and uh, even Chai has quite a lot of ClickBank products actually on, on, mm -hmm. uh, on ClickBank doing very well back then. And what I did while working for him because out of desperation, I figured out there was a, this thing called cookie overriding, override cookie, cookie stuffing. So in, in other words, you could insert like a, a code onto their... ClickBank landing page, which will allow my my ClickBank uh my ClickBank affiliate link override other people's affiliate links. So right. if you send anyone to the website, you'll get overwritten with my affiliate link. And because mm -hmm. of that, uh, I was able to get I took about I think easily a hundred over thousand US from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then in two thousand nine, uh, what happened in January was that people were offering bonuses. For, uh, yeah, for, you know, if you buy through my link, I'll give you a bonus, you know. You want to claim your bonus, just send me the receipt. And then some people were not receiving your bonuses because uh, apparently that they said they click on their link, but but the commission didn't go to them. It went to someone else. Mm. It was me. <laughs> and uh, so they were, so they complained to ClickBank and ClickBank wrote to you and Chia, you know. And I was like, uh, I was, uh, I guess I was, uh, I was afraid when I saw that email. Mm. So eventually I called Ewan to confess. I said, you know, I took the money and uh, I, I, I override the commission. Uh, that's how I get. I, and I took some money from that. And I, yeah, so I'm, say, I'm sorry. Is, is there any way I can like return you the money? 
And uh, but of course he didn't believe how much I took, so he actually went to report to the police. Uh, and I was under investigation. And uh, at a point in time, so he didn't was... believe. So he didn't believe, like, if you show him the the accounts, or whatever, he didn't believe that you took that much, and he thought you took more. Is that it? Yeah, he, just he, to... he feels that I I could have taken even more. Yeah. So mm -hmm. of course he reported to the police. Police came, and uh, and of course I was under investigation, and so I had to go and uh. Well, cooperate, and uh, it was the worst time of my life because my wife was just pregnant with my first twin daughters. So uh, that was what happened, and uh, I tried to adjourn the case because I want to see my daughters come out. You know, or I don't even know if I can get to see them, or when would I ever get to see them again? And I thought like forty-four charges would mean, and the uh, police officer was saying you are lucky you are not charged thousand over charges because you had thousands over of transactions including because they charge you per transaction. So including like some ClickBank products have upsell, downsell, right? So you have a lot of front end $7, $17, $27. It all adds up to like, like thousands of charges. But because ClickBank pay us like uh, weekly, right? Weekly check. So they charge me based on every weekly check that I receive, which is 44 charges. And, uh, and, uh, I th and the worst charge was like, one charge for computer misuse act in Singapore, it's a probably like six years maximum. Mm -hmm. And of course, I've never committed a crime before and I never like like to read about news on crime and how people are going to crime and how, how many years they were sentenced. Like I never really go into like think about that, that thing. But the thought that when the lawyer told us based on like the worst case scenario, six years, I'm thinking six times 44, like, ah. <laughs> I mean, if I'm dead, it's still uh, my my skeleton is will still be there. <laughs> it will still be there, you know. Uh, it's like that's the end of my life, like. I mean, that's the that end of my end end of my salary. There's nothing more to, for me, right? Uh, and you were a very young father back then. Uh, you were a new father as well, right? Yes, I was a new father at uh, 31 years old. You know, it's like my whole life mm -hmm. is over. So I told myself, I said, you know, there must be a way that I, you know, I ever thought of. I mean, I have thoughts of suicide, of course. I have thoughts of running away from the country but i can't just leave my family behind like that right mm -hmm. and so i had to face the music and i taught myself i talked to myself i mean i was living in fear every day you know on the impending so i told myself i said and if my life is the end then what's there what's there what's left behind is my kids and my wife what can i leave behind for them right you probably be oh, I said, a lot of debts instead yeah I, I said the only way i can do to contribute and my wife wasn't working because she thought i was making good money online which mm. i wasn't <laughs> in fact i took some of the i was trying to like find a way to justify my crime okay i mean no 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 wrongdoing is justifiable okay but i was justifying that i'll took i'll take some of the money that i made from there and do some real google marketing on to clickbank products so I'll like take the money from there. So I will have some real ClickBank transactions, real ClickBank commission uh, mixed with not the real ClickBank commissions. <laughs> okay. You know, yeah, I was trying to do that. But anyway, and uh, so I, I knew that that was the end. So I told myself, what other ways can I generate income for the family? So I realized that the fastest way is still offline marketing. The fastest, mm -hmm. the highest ticket, the best way to close someone is still online marketing because I've seen and then when I was in Ewan Chia, online closing, right? Online closing. I mean, if you hire a good copywriter, I, I know Ewan Johan, they, they spend like five figures hiring like the best copywriters. Now, of course, it makes sense for that because they already have a list of about five, half a million people, you know, on their mailing list because I was there. Yeah. I saw, I knew that. And with such a huge list, all they need is a good copy. So if they don't want to write copy, it makes sense for them to pay 10000 to someone to write it. So... So they got very good copywriters to write it. But if not, you know, usually conversion online isn't as high as offline. Mm -hmm. So I realized that offline, the conversion is way higher. So when he did, uh, so I told myself, I need to do something offline, you know, or that pays the highest commission. And that's when I realized that selling real estate is the best. And Singapore is in the best position to do real estate because our real estate is one of the most expensive on the planet. Uh, in fact, I went to Google online. The most expensive city in the world is Singapore, <laughs> right? 
right? Alongside uh, with like one of one of the awards that I think a lot of Singaporeans don't really want, but is there. <laughs> but yeah, uh, be- before we get to that, I uh, just want to ask a little bit about because the experience of you being a prisoner. I know it's not something that really want to talk so much about, but um, could you just also just I just because I want to know a little bit like, how uh, how did you overcome you know this feeling of you know you know this dread this this like you know you want to commit suicide even though inside there or something how when did you truth, overcome that? <laughs> but the yeah. honest truth is i cried myself to sleep for the first month mm. yeah i couldn't i couldn't accept it for first month yeah okay. i was uh so, yeah i was like i i because you know what the moment you were sentenced right you don't even know when's your visitation. You don't even know if I don't even know. I don't. I couldn't. Couldn't even say goodbye to my wife. So I don't know if she's gonna be around with the kids to wait for me. I I, I don't know, right? Mm. And I think during the first one month or three months or something like that, one month there's no visitation or something like that. So I really don't know what's going on outside. I'm like in my own world, right? So I'm I'm just inside with a cell with. Uh, eight other strangers, seven other strangers, you know, sometimes six, and I'll, I'll just cry myself to sleep, telling myself like, hey, like, like why, why did I do all this, right? Why did this have to happen to me? So I was, uh, yeah, so one month, it took me one month to, to find ways to get over it. Of course, uh, you get to go to church inside, feeling shameful of myself, you know, being a, mm-hmm. I mean, being a Christian and, and, having to go to prison, you know, doing all these things. And I, yeah, that was a difficult time. I mean, if not for God, um, what helped me live through was probably just reading the Bible, actually reading the Bible. And then God inside, I mean, the library, they have, a, they have library, they have a, not exactly a library, but they have a, like a trolley that they push in that has like a, books in a crate. And then you get to borrow books from inside the crate, <laughs> something like that <laughs> to read. So, so, so- how, was there a lot of selections or is it like very limited? Of course, it's uh, very limited. But I said, what kind of... Uh, it's still good enough. They have some, some good motivational books. I read a lot of personal development books. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, stories, uh, books that I've never read. Like, I don't even like love reading books, right? So inside that, it was the only thing you could do. So I told myself, at some point, I... I think at some point in the prison, I told myself that that I cannot just continue like that. It's, it's a waste of time for me to be in prison. After knowing that it's going to be two years, nine months, because I was sentenced 44 months, but I was also given 30% off. Uh, they have this thing called a uh, 30% remission. Uh, it's to just prevent you from getting to fights in a prison or doing anything stupid in prison. And then they'll give the full 44 months full on. Uh, but if not, you get 30% off. So that would work out to be two years, nine months. So I knew that I knew my sentence for sure. That there's some certainty that it's going to be two years, nine months, right? So I asked myself, what can I do with these two years, nine months to ensure that it's worthwhile? Right? Okay. Of course, it is not worthwhile. But if you have to make it worthwhile, what's the best you can do? So I told myself, well, I'll take it like I'm taking a degree, a three years degree, right? A sabbatical mm-hmm. from work. Right. And I say, I'm going to study and devour whatever I can. Uh, good news is that uh, my wife gets to send in six books every month, something like that. They, they can send in six books. So I told her what kind of books I want to read. So um, she sent me, she's, I asked her to send in books on like uh, biography of successful people like Richard Branson, Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, and all these iconic people. You know, and I uh, want to read more about the books and things like that. So I read a lot. I read, I think, I think for almost two years, I read about 300 over books wow. uh, when I was in prison. So I just read and study and, and I, t- I took down notes and, and I used the letter that I used to like send back home to take down all the notes, what I've learned. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I don't forget, you know. So, uh, so I took that, yeah, I took that 40, that uh, two years to actually study and read a lot and of course two years nine months ah david kevin uh so hey david <laughs> david no even chia and i don't know if david knew knew the case <laughs> i suppose david knows the case yeah 
yeah, the unfortunate case that I did. So anyway, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, so it was a difficult time inside. Yeah, I cried. Uh. Yeah, every time I see my my wife on the TV, you know, on the screen, uh, we get only like, uh, we get 20 minutes on the screen and 15 minutes mm-hmm. or 10 to 15 minutes face to face. Okay. Did she ever, years, I don't know, I'm just wondering, did she ever like sneak in letters inside those books? I don't know. <laughs> just no, no, no. <laughs> I don't think she was there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Now it's a prison. They, they bet through every letter that you send out. So every time I write the letter, you know, you can send out. Yeah, I heard recently that now they can allow you use email. So hmm. you can email inside. <laughs> so they have an okay. iPad that, that everybody gets to pass around and use inside the cell. Something like that. <laughs> okay, so so you were in there for, you have a lot of books, 300 over different books over the period of two plus years. Then, of course, because of good behavior, uh, you got a discount, so to speak, discount. Yeah, so because of good use... behavior, I, I was, uh, there are two things. One is the 30% discount, that, which is given. So that brings it down to two years, nine months. And then, uh, so two years I sent inside, and uh, then nine months is because they also have this thing called for anyone who's like prison for the first time, they allow you this thing called work release scheme, early release scheme. So they let you come up early. Um, um, if you can find a job outside, if there's someone outside who's willing to hire you, uh, you can get to come out early. And because of you come out early, so that you can actually still provide for your family. Mm-hmm. You know. So David says here, uh, everyone has ups and downs in life. It's how we move forward from a mishap, which determines our future success. Agree, yeah. David. Agree. That's right. Yeah. So, but of course, going through that. Uh, I wouldn't say that I was strong uh, enough. I think I was just as weak as most people would think uh, you you would be. Same I would be. Mm-hmm. But after a while, you you just uh, you just you just set you just have to accept the fact lah. At first, you cannot accept. Then you have no choice. You have to accept. And mm-hmm. once you accept, then you ask yourself what best. Once you are able to accept, then you can go to the next step, which is what can you make the best out of this? Right. So you were in debt afterwards, no, because you came out already. The, uh, this, uh, so you need to get work. Then afterwards, they give you yeah, nine yeah. months off. Right. I mean, thank God, my brother and my mom they they have a they have a business. So my brother came back. He started his own brand uh, in Singapore called Benjamin Barker. I mean, I'm very proud of him. He's uh, he's won a lot of uh, SM, SME awards or something like that. I think uh, it's quite a well known brand right now in Singapore. A lot of people thought it's from UK. <laughs> mm. So you know. Uh, he did. He did the branding pretty well, and uh, oh, and then did, after that, yeah, <laughs> and and then after that, I was uh because through that they were able to apply for me to come out earlier to get some job to get work la, to get, uh to work, get work right. done, yeah. So I came out and uh so I didn't know what to do when I came out, but I was full of hope in a prison because I think I think it was in prison where I read a lot of books from the library uh from the library as well a lot of. People have gone through failures and they've all overcome it. And then I realized that every human, as long as you're a human being, there's no way you can avoid feeling disappointment. Everyone, every human being has ever, has ever failed and felt disappointed, like every single human being, right? So, mm-hmm. so I realized that what allows them to succeed eventually is it's not that they have not failed, it's that they were able to uh, always believe that there's always a way out. Mm. Yeah, always believe that there must be there's always a way up. No matter how bad you are, no matter what how bad the situation you are. So I I learned that and I think in the Bible it also is Bible also talks a lot about that. The Bible is all about hope, right? Uh a lot of people who feel hopeless, but uh you know Jesus gives a lot of hope to people. So to me, after I read all all the books uh, of all the successful entrepreneurs who have overcome, even Nelson Mandela, I mean he was I read his story. He was in prison for mm-hmm. 20 years. Yet, yet, he could still become president. Yeah. I mean, think about it. Mm. So, yeah, you, you know, so... Yeah, David says, congrats to you and lots of love. Thank you so much, uh, David. And yeah, Simon is in the house. Yes, to, mm-hmm. definitely from Simon Leong. Okay, okay. So anyway, that was uh, that. Was that uh, so, uh, you know, a little bit of that history. And then... Uh, yeah, I came out. I didn't know what to do, but I did very well in real estate. Uh, I think just before I prison, I went to prison. I, I I didn't share this, but just before I went, I went to prison. I told myself I had to make money for the family to survive, right? So I realized that with the highest ticket item 
it's not affiliate marketing costs. I realized the most, the highest ticket item you can make uh, if you're good with offline communications uh, and you love pre presenting people and you love to see nice houses, property is the best, most super high ticket. Like I, mm. in 2009, right? Because I used all my internet marketing skills and went to apply in the real estate. Little did I know that my internet marketing uh, skills that I learned about SEO, pay-per-click, copywriting, everything, I didn't know that it was rare to have such thing in real estate. And back then in 2009, real estate was pretty still old school. Uh, they were still banging on advertising on newspaper to get leads. Yep. And oh, uh, the yes, most yeah. ever did was property guru, right? Mm. And, and they were not even tap it, tapping into Bing ads, uh, Reddit ads, and you know, ads uh, that are like uh, in forum ads and things like that, you know. And I, I already knew all these things. So learning CPA, affiliate marketing. So I thought, I, I went in not knowing that, not knowing that it will, it's going to work, okay? Because I have no experience in, 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 in uh, real, estate, real estate. So I realized that when you apply, like in internet marketing, it's pretty competitive right now to apply all the internet marketing stuff. But maybe there are some industries outside, right? They are very weak in internet marketing and you can go in and dominate. Mm, you know so i decided to go in and dominate like i need i wouldn't really stay out of desperation so i said that it's high ticket real estate right so i decided going like and i set my i remember building my first website it's called singaporebunglows.com because mm, oh, bungalows okay. are the highest ticket item in singapore that you can sell so I, I wonder if I could just start it. And I generated some leads from there, you know, from uh, from high net worth individuals. And my first mm -hmm. mine in real estate in 2009, I remember I closed my first deal. It was a 9,000 plus square feet uh, penthouse. So it's mm -hmm. like a freaking bungalow in the sky for 10 million. And I had 3% commission. So that was 300,000 for selling like one house. Nice. In that first nice. mine, you know. Yeah, so subsequently how, I use how it. Long, to... How long was that after you come we came out of prison? How long did you take for that? Okay, I came out in uh in February. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I came out in February, I still remember February. It was just one week after Valentine's Day. Uh yeah, February. And then I had my first I closed my first deal in in April. Two months. Yes, two months. <laughs> That's two amazing, months. man. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay. Two months. So two months, 300K. Okay, all right. But you, of course, you were trying to, you need to, you were wanting to make up for lost time and lost effort to try to get back really quickly. Yeah, I was, trying to, I was trying to get back. So I, I, I just tried, like, I, I mean, I have nothing to lose already, right? I think some mm -hmm. of us, some of you probably have a lot to lose for you to try something new. Probably because affiliate marketing already worked for you and you probably are happy with 10,000 or 15,000. So you're like, ah, oh, real estate, um, you know. For me, I had no choice. I, I couldn't go back to do affiliate marketing. I, I, yeah, something like that. I didn't think of going back to do affiliate marketing. And so I, and because I did, uh, and so I, I, you know, I just got the case for affiliate marketing, right? So why should I, why would I want to go back and do affiliate marketing? So because when you have no choice and I need six figures, my choice become limited. Somehow it made me very productive. Now, of course, okay. of course, it could have. I mean, I mean, the financial crisis just started, it just ended in two thousand eight in December, and when I joined real estate, it was like two thousand nine. It was like still during the crisis, right? We're still during the mm -hmm. crisis in March two thousand nine. You know, uh, and little did I know that it was a good time. So I said, sometimes it's really about God's timing to me. You know, because that's something that's not, not within my control. So what's within my control is that I took the opportunity. I had the skills already, right? And I took the opportunity to go in because I realized that I had no choice. That was the only way I could make six figures for family before I went into prison. Mm. So when I went to real estate, uh, yeah. So I, I made multiple six figures inside and I kind of enjoyed. It was a lot more work than uh, a lot more work in terms of physical work than of course internet marketing uh you market a lot of mental work and things like that but uh like technical work but for for real estate it was so simple it was just like advertise to get the leads you call them a lot of calling so you're doing the telemarketing you're doing everything you're showing the houses uh, you, you're, you're, so i did i even applied my internet marketing offline seminar strategies like i learned from even chad and all of them who all the internet marketers right who do like offline selling right 
So I did the same thing for real estate. I actually generated a, for a project, right? There was like, there's this project called Interlace. It was like a, one of the iconic projects in the world that had houses that were interla interstack, interlaced, yep. like yep. interweave. You know, it was an iconic project. And I collected like within two days of uh, online, I collected 200 over leads and I did a, a seminar, right? 100 over people turned up and I collected about 40 checks, 40 blank wow. checks <laughs> in one night for that project, you know? Yeah, that was, I remember, it was fe it's September, yeah, it was September 2009. I remember that was mm. September 2009, yeah. Now, of course, I went to prison in 2000, June. Yeah, so I, after I did well in real estate, then of course, I had to face the music. Like, I mean, I couldn't adjourn the case any more longer. I had to mm. go and face the music and that's how I, later on, I think I was sentenced in June uh, 2010. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's when I went in. Yeah, so when I came out, I, I was full of hope. I still told my wife, Hey, I, I'm going to build a $50 million business. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. So you came out then afterwards as you were, but interesting you say that because you actually build a lot more. <laughs> uh, so I think we've, you shared a lot of uh, background and I think it's, it's very brave of you to share your story because I think a lot of people uh, would want to hide or rather, you know, try to cover up that they did a crime of stealing from someone, especially uh, it's not, it's, it's not something to be proud of, but uh, I think you mentioned a little bit earlier before uh, in another interview that I watched where you, you know, you said that if, if you were to rewind time again, you might do it again, right? Actually, it's not that I'm, I might do it again, okay? If I could rewind time, I would not have done it. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but I think the question should be like, the question is, if you could go back where you were, could you have not done it? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Okay? Going back to where I was, I, I remember how being how I was feeling back then, I couldn't have prevented that from happening. Mm. Okay. So yeah, then I don't, you... yeah, I don't think Go being in the situation where I was, the way I was feeling back then, I would have been able to change anything. Mm. I think mean, a lot of us have regrets in life, I'm sure. All of us look back in our life. We have times in our life where we made mistakes. And if you ask yourself, could you actually go back and tell your old self if there was a time machine, you know, back to the future, you take a time machine, go back and you try to tell yourself out of this, you know, maybe uh, you can't believe yourself out of that as well. Because that was... I think if, if you came back all the way back, you told yourself, I don't think you'll be listening much from yourself. It'll be like, why, why, why? <laughs> you're like... Like, I'm feeling this way because I'm in this situation. I needed this. This doesn't open the door for me to insert the affiliate link inside. And it mm. was like, it was so easy, you know. I, I hired a, a Ukraine programmer to help me do some random inserting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when you, you got very creative in your way of uh, of get of getting that. Okay, okay. Kind of cover up yourself a little bit as well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so that not every ClickBank transaction is me, you see. <laughs> and of yeah, course, I know that would be way too obvious. I, I think back then, ClickBank allows you to create unlimited user, uh, unlimited uh, IDs. Hop links. Hop links, yeah. yeah they, uh, unlimited hop links, unlimited hop links. Hop links uh, different, all kinds of different ID of things. You can have 20 accounts, 100 accounts of ClickBank. You can. Mm -hmm. And they all can send you the same check. Correct, correct. Right? I don't know so, about now. You know, I'm not really in ClickBank anymore. Yeah, I'm not very much clip anymore, but I think they probably will be in the same thing. And uh, <laughs> both David, Simon, and and uh, Nicholas, they're all having a chat. <laughs> they're all talking to each other. <laughs> okay, so but I have a question though. When it comes to you, you've come, you've you've gone through this situation of being in prison, then uh, you commit for committing a crime. You 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 pay for it. You came out. You made a very in two months time. You make a three hundred k in two months time by utilizing the skills. No, 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 sorry, sorry. My 200K was not when I, sorry, it was not when I came out from prison, was beef. Okay. So in 2009, January, uh, even reported to the police, I was under investigation. I, oh. I joined, yes, it was before I went in. Ah, so my okay, 2000 okay. was, was before I went in. Right, 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 right. Okay, yeah, okay. So, from so even just past, before you go in, afterwards you went, yes. to, afterwards you face the music. Oh, okay, okay, I get you now. I get yes, you now. Okay, yes. Okay. And then after that, uh, it was, yeah, then March, I had to go into real estate because I had to find some, I was already under investigation already. I needed some way to to find money for the family. And then, of course, 
to survive, like, you know, that's the, the only thing I can do. So, you know, then in April, I went full on into real estate. Yeah, so, but when I came out, I didn't know what to do. So I, I was, uh, I thought maybe I can, one thing I still love is teaching. One of the interesting, yeah, so one of the interesting thing about uh, when I came out, I was like, I wanted to do go back affiliate marketing again, actually. But I was thinking, where should I start or what should I start, right? So I started out with, uh, with uh, so one of my property real estate managers came and asked me and said, hey, since you're so good at generating leads, uh, why don't you teach me or teach me how to do it or maybe train my team how to do it, you know? So I thought to myself, okay, maybe I'll train my team how to do it, train his team how to do it. So I end up, you know, uh, training his team and he realized that, hey, it's not bad, no? Why don't you? And I was, I was teaching first, uh, charging like maybe only $300. And of course, I make commissions by also promoting them to, because a lot of them in real estate doesn't know much about affiliate marketing. So I was promoting Bluehost and I make six figures promoting Bluehost, <laughs> only Bluehost, right? So I was just teaching real estate agents how to like set up their own WordPress website to generate leads. And I was charging about $300 and I still make like back end, I, I do make from affiliate commission from them having to subscribe to Bluehost, right? And Bluehost at that time was like, 65 or 90 US dollars per, per customer, right? Even though they come in at $2.95 per month plan or, you know, any plan actually. So um, so I made some money and subsequently my manager said, hey, you, since you are, I mean, it's so good. Why don't I restart a training company? So I started a training company in uh, real estate marketing, just focusing only on real estate uh, SEO and uh, SEM, right? Just only for real estate because most of my results came from there. And so I started a training, uh, training school and I started training. I think I had about, within a year and a half, I think I have about a thousand real estate students who paid for my mm -hmm. course. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, then of course I got a bit tired of teaching. Uh, the money was good. The teaching was a bit fulfilling, but a lot of, a lot of support that we had, I had to provide for them, you know? So I was thinking of, mm -hmm. is there any way I can go back? So I also tried Amazon FBA. I tried Shopify. Uh, did okay Shopify, but after a while, I realized that I need to keep finding the next new, another new research on what's right, the, the new next hot topic, the next hot topic. Yeah, the next new yeah. niche again, the next new new product again, you know, although yeah. I made like six figures from that, but five figures from that. And I, I later on decided that I was going to go and do something. I want to do something, like e-commerce, drop shipping, but something more scalable and something different. So that's when mm -hmm. I, that's when one of my students shared me about e-commerce and it was the, thing that I was least expected, least expected, okay? Uh, E-commerce model. So basically it's everything outsourced, but I get to not just be an athlete, but I can build a sales team around so the world. So this is, so this one is, uh, I would say probably is your question over here, sorry. So is this what you did to generate the 100 million in sales from nothing? Yep, is this yep, what you're talking about? Yeah, yep. mm, there was the only okay. way so, you could generate 100 million with zero ads. I mean, you, yeah. we, most internet marketers know that we run ads. I mean. Running ads, no, no problem. I mean, you can run ads, but we all know that Facebook ads, you know, it's uh, you got to keep tweaking your ROAV, your RO, your your ROI. You need to keep tweaking because it's it's not consistent actually, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So some of you probably know that it's not consistent. Uh, after a while, you do YouTube ads, but you can see most marketers, whatever ads they run, after a while on YouTube they also stop. After a while on Amazon, on Facebook they also stop. You will notice this trend. I mean, since two thousand two, when I first started now. I've seen a lot of marketers who started doing one form of ads and then they stop and then they do another social media and then they stop again. So there's a lot of tweaking involved all the time, you know? And uh, so I thought there's two ways for you. You can pay advertising to get affiliate sales or you can pay referrals uh, to get affiliate sales, right? So I want to build my own affiliate sales team. So I thought I tried, so I give it a try whether I could use e-commerce to do that. And then I built, from then I have a uh, built a team to about, uh, to about 70 countries. So I've got like a team of about 54,000 athletes. Mm. Okay. So, so, so this is what you did to generate. So, okay. That's a, uh, that's what a very brief standpoint. And I think right now is a very good way because this is what kind of the, 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 the meat that I kind of get into as well to kind of dig into your brains. So kind figuratively speaking, not literally <laughs> to find out a little bit about how did you actually generate all these sales uh, pretty much from nothing? And one of the things you did was actually, like you said, is actually to, to build up a team. 
and then that team was able to help you to go into multiple countries, 70 different countries, and help yeah. you to continuously generate that. That's because right. so, the e-commerce platform that I use, uh, they really set up most of the stuff for me. Unlike people who do Shopify, they have to do the website, they have to optimize the website conversion, they have to run the Facebook ads. I mean, I can also run Facebook ads, uh, and they have to keep finding the next new product, the maintenance of the, the website, or you know, dealing with the drop shipper. Now, I don't have to have any problem to do the dropshipper because the dropshipper does everything. Uh, they do the website for me. They integrate a multi-tier effort program that is already built into the system for me. And they have a great, great unique products that are not found anywhere. And they always, every six months, they always launch a, a, a new, new product into the marketplace that is not available in 160, 150 countries. So I thought that was a pretty sustainable model, great model. Uh, they have a they have great products that have high repeat recurring purchases so that was what i was looking looking at so when i thought that that is possible and i look at of course whatever products that they market i always do uh, research compared to what's doing well out there for example uh, one of the ways to analyze the market is you can i mean some of you are familiar with google trends if you go google trend you can type in the market and it will show you the searches whether it's increasing or decreasing like, for example, you go to Google Trend right now and you type the word skincare. All right. Now, this is something that is like remotely internet marketers would think about doing. All right. But most internet marketers is always in a niche. Or they're excited in the niche on how to make money. What's the next big thing to make money? All right. They're always yeah. promoting that. What's the next big thing to make money? Right. Is it like big ads or, you know, or yeah, I remember Mike at the same time, it was uh, like butterfly marketing back then. And I don't know what's now and now and then there's Amazon. It was it's all about internet marketers uh, love marketing, how to make money niche. <laughs> mm -hmm. So if you look at skincare and you go skincare, you type on Google Trend, it's actually upper trend. And you can also type like skincare market size and it's a huge size. And you can also research on who are the big players in this space. And when I look at all the big players in this space and they're growing, and I have a product that is way better than them price better, technology is better. It's it's only getting the word out for that. So because of that, I realized that there's definitely a big market for this, you know? So I decided mm -hmm. to market it uh, using referral marketing techniques. Uh. Okay, very interesting. So you, now that, because this is what you're kind of also working on right now, and you use this actually to build a base, to build out your own team. So this is, so I think you covered something very interesting because they, they, the, the company, uh, the, the business that you chose has covered a lot of different things for you. So perhaps you can also share a little bit of, you know, what are the you know elements needed to sell like different kinds of products online successfully? What what is it do you think are the necessary elements? I mean, of course, a lot of people know this, right? Uh, I think some people might not know or might know this is, of course, the way you package your products when you sell, right? Most products can sell. But if you have watched, if you have read like Breakthrough Advertising, right? It's all about the angle. It's about... How do you look through the product and find what is the, the main selling point, the most sexy part of the product, and you just take that one sexy part, of the, the most sexy part of the product, and use it as your upfront offer. So, of course, your offer. You need your offer. You need your audience, right? And, of course, you need, yeah, you need a good offer and an audience. Basically, just two things that you need. I mean, traffic is everywhere, but you have to do your research because different products, the market audience is at different places. Right. Mm -hmm. So, for example, a lot of people think that LinkedIn is not a good place for like uh, skincare. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Probably a lot of people think that Instagram is a better place. Now, no doubt, Instagram is a better place, but Instagram is quite overcrowded. Then, so I have an affiliate which is doing pretty well using LinkedIn for skincare. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for skincare. I mean, it's 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 odd. In fact, I in fact I was the one that told her I don't think it will work. <laughs> But surprisingly, right. it worked. So, so at the end of the day, is your offer. I review your offer and how do you put that offer in front of your target audience? Mm -hmm. I think right so now the, the king is actually right. But right now, the king of of all lead generation is actually content marketing right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you you are looking into finding the 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 best part of the product. That, yes. that's the very, very crucial element and afterwards you want to go you definitely want to use like you mentioned just before that is the content using yes. content to push it out because that's yes. one of the important things 
Mm-hmm. Okay, for example, if you do like content marketing, uh, why content marketing works? Okay, you're going to think through a person, let's say a person wants to buy a product. Okay, you're going to think through the framework, like what are the problems they're having? What are the questions they're asking in their mind? If they're worried, list out, if they're worried, there's many, many questions. What are the questions that will be in your mind? Like, oh, how do I know uh, what's good for acne? Uh, uh, is, is this good product good for acne? Is, uh, is, um, uh, let's say acne problem, right? The person, is this good for acne? How to prevent acne scars? You know, or uh, they're probably worry about uh, is there uh, uh, what causes acne, right? Uh, how long does it take to heal acne? Or like, which is the best brand for acne, <laughs> right? Uh, like is oxy is oxy good for acne? You know, I mean they also talk about they also ask some brands, I'm sure. So, for example, right now you want to buy a camera, right? So you want to know like which is the better, you know, video cam. So you'll probably be worrying and asking yourself, like, is this cam versus this cam better? So that's a good content for you, right? This versus this cam, right? Uh, is uh, uh, which is the best best cam for like YouTube, uh, like for YouTube cameras for YouTube mm. creating your own YouTube videos, you know, on a laptop like for Mac. <laughs> okay. Right. So that yeah, means so you're, you're, like, you're looking worries. at buyer intention. This is that what you're saying? Also, there's like yeah, you look at all intentions. their worries and all their problems, and you list it out, and then you create content for them. And the fact that they are reading this kind of content already tells you that they are the right target market for your product already. Right. Mm, so okay. if let's say you are selling a uh, roof funnel, for example, okay, think about all the headaches, all the worries that people are having when it comes to like they want to set up a website, right? What are they worry. So what would it go like? Which is the best platform for creating a website, All right? Uh, uh, should I do click funnel versus group funnel, or they are probably thinking about uh, uh, what is better than group funnel, or, or maybe they haven't thought of group funnel yet. They probably are. Uh, most people probably know WordPress more than group funnel, so probably like what is better WordPress? You know, is WordPress easy? Uh, Wix versus WordPress because Wix uh, they advertise a lot as well, right? Um, and uh, yeah, Wix or WordPress, which is better? The top five best, what the top uh, host website website for funnels, mm-hmm. right? Or anything oh. cheaper than click funnels. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Simon has to come in. It's Group Asia now. <laughs> it's Group Asia now. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, Simon represents that. So definitely it's Group Asia. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Right. I mean, just think about all the all the things people are all kinds of ways people are thinking about their problem hmm. in your market. Okay. Okay. Another one for group Asia. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay. So think about the different problems. Think of what they are considering, and then afterwards uh, find out what are the concerns, the the problems that they're thinking of, expecting, and then put out content out there. Then, yeah. And afterwards, use... content like for example, uh, how to, like for example. The tools that Group Funnel, let's say I self Group Funnel, right? The tools that Group Funnels provide are like email marketing, affiliate marketing, whatever. So you can actually provide content for people who are asking about, like, uh, maybe you can create like twelve best email headlines that you can use, right? Right. These mm-hmm. people are into email marketing already, so they are in the right market. And then, and then at the end, you can sell why Group uh, email marketing. You don't. Is better because it's all integrated instead of you having like get, get response and integrate with WordPress and I mean some people still love that but there will be a group of people that you know because they because of the value that you have provided the content they mm. they kind of have some trust in you right so you for example you can talk about why you should set up an affiliate program right why running an affiliate program is the most and some successful case study of running an affiliate program then at the end Ask them like, how do you set an affiliate program? Well, to set an affiliate program, you need a group, you need a funnel, you need this, you need that. Most people have to do so many things. Instead, why don't you use group funnel? You have everything all in one, and uh, that's a free. Trial. It's like, oh, you yeah, have free forever. I don't. But I always believe that you lead with content. Nowadays, you lead with content. Mm-hmm. You lead with content. Interesting. So. On the flip side, if let's say I were to ask, because we're talking about how to find the elements that are necessary to sell uh, products online. I didn't prep you on this. Again, I like to throw some random spanners here just to check. Right, right. <laughs> okay. So if even on the flip side, what kind of elements should we look out for to avoid that kind of product? What kind of elements should we look out for? What kind of you mean avoid? For? You mean yeah, avoid? Let's say there's other, 
yeah, let me say some product came in front of you and they asked you to become an affiliate for it, you have to promo for it, you know. But what, what if you look at it, if you analyze it, what are the things that you would say, that, you know, this is something that I won't go, I won't promote of certain elements? Oh, yeah, I elements won't promote that... like gambling stuff <laughs> or <Okay. laughs> things things for 21 years and over only. <laughs> hmm. Kind of stuff I won't promote. Although I've I've known people who heard of people who've made a lot of money in those markets, but I just won't promote those. Yeah, and I think most of us there's so many things to promote. In actually, every one of us are fans in different stuff, right? We we have we have all have interests in different stuff. We all have different values. In fact, there's more than enough products out there for us to promote for every one of us to promote. Right. Yeah. And the, the, only, the, the only thing is that what is the marketing angle, right? What how are you packaging and selling the offer, and also how are you going out there to provide using content to actually get targeted clients in? Mm. Okay. All right. So okay. Okay. Thanks for sharing that. And now then yeah. And of course, one of the best to join still join venture. I mean. From even Chia Johan Mok days when I watch everyone everyone build the list through joint venture, it is still the it's still the fastest way to grow a business through joint venture. <laughs> That's still the best. Okay. I mean Simon Leong, I think I heard your name back then. And also David Kavanagh, I, I, I remember seeing you back in Singapore when Success Resource got, got you to come and speak back in the mid two thousand days, I remember. Yeah, and 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 joint ventures are still the best. I mean the, your list grows the fastest. You get the most sales when you get invited in front of a ready audience, you know, that someone already has built their audience and you go in there, both, both of you can make more money than you having to scale and do your ads on your own, actually. Hmm. So now that I mentioned that, now it's better than that. Okay, so in this case, because what we talked about is when you're trying to sell products, you're selling on your own individual basis. But one of the things that I think that sets you really apart from an individual's effort is having a team. So that's what you talked a little bit about earlier. Yeah. So uh, perhaps team, we yeah. can, yeah. So perhaps you can give some advice, okay, for on managing a sales team for small business entrepreneurs. Now, I'm this advice, this this question I had uh, put out over on the screen. It's a little bit layered because I wanted to ask about, you know, what if someone who has never done it, who never has, who has never managed a team before, who has has is just a one man person, how can he or she start his or her own team to be able to start to have a sales team, and then afterwards, how do you start to manage? for like small business and entrepreneurs? Okay, the advantage of having a team, of course, is leverage. I mean, you want to have a team so that you can have, le you can have leverage, right? So um, if you've never built a team before, of course, your business model must be cater to team, which means you, you must have profit sharing in your business model, then you can cater to have a team, right? So if you want to grow your team, then of course, the team must be able to bring in sales as well. Right, and then those people who are fans of the products, you can also convert them to be part of the sales team. Usually, the best people who are who are the best evangelists are a fan. Like, like I'm in this church called New Creation, right? So people who are fans of Pastor Prince or my the pastor that that I'm the church I'm with, and they are the best evangelists <laughs> to talk about it, to to share his products, to talk about his books, you know, and things like that. So you, so I always prefer that fans. If people love the products. They are the best candidate for you to turn them into your sales team. That's number one. Mm. Uh, number two, I would think is to also get them excited uh, about the products. Uh, and also to build the sales team, you still need to have some form of recognition, you know, uh, recognition. Uh, you got to get them excited. You got to show them, not just tell them, but you got to show them, like, hey, you know what? This week, we're going to take this action, this action, you know, we're going to go out and, and uh, we're going to achieve this a bonus or we're going to achieve this this week. We're going to talk to like uh, 100 people this week. We're going to go out and impact. We're going to do like create content that's going to like be able to get more customers this week. So this week, I'm going to create this and this content, right? So let's all go out and do it. So it's always about going out there and taking action and recognizing people's small little successes in the team. Okay. So yeah. I have a question, Nekis. Maybe just we just rewind the clock a little bit. When you were first starting out, when you were starting to in this business that you're doing right now, right? How did you actually yeah. start uh, training them? For, because you definitely had to start from small and then eventually yeah, go to yeah. 100. How right. did you start? So I started because I really had really I had really had a base of customers already. They they were just the right base of customers for me to share the products that I was actually marketing. 
they were just the right candidate and and also because i already had some influence over them uh so they came on board because they, they attended my digital marketing course so usually digital marketing course for affiliate for real estate marketing was also be able to can also get them interested in e-commerce as well at the same time so it was it was a it was a really a smooth transition so i had a very quick start compared to most other people okay but i think there's something in it where you mentioned is that you were actually leveraging on your existing resources and i think a lot yes. of people tend to not look into that where they when they are starting out they want to create something new but they forget about what their existing right. resources are right. i think if you remember russell bronson did talk about your dream 100 clients or mm -hmm. dream 50 clients but i'd like you all to consider your dream 100 or dream 50 are your collaborators okay they're not your the fastest way to grow is your collaborators so you you don't for example if you're doing group fund let's say you okay i i because you told me you're doing your marketing group funnels right so i think a lot of group funnel people here are inside here as well so i might as well think <laughs> we talk about it okay so for example let's say you are you want to market group your marketing group funnels okay talk to some okay so who is not who has a list of people who are not in uh who are not in group funnels right but they but what you can provide in group funnels they don't provide for example for example Salespeople need to know how to generate leads and uh, like real estate agents, right? You can talk to all the people who have a group of real estate agents that they manage. Okay, so you go to them and then there are many so-called group division directors all over the world. You can go to them and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to teach your, your guys. I'm going to give a talk about creating funnels. Now, you're an expert at real estate and you teach real estate sales, but you're not an expert in, uh, group, in building sales funnel. If I can show you how having a great sales funnel will actually generate more leads for real estate, do you think this would be a good content for me to share with your audience? Mm -hmm. Okay. And would it be a great idea if they sign up for a group funnel, you will get paid an affiliate commission from that. Right? So you go in there and you do a, I mean, people call it preview, right? You can go in there and add value, show them case study exactly how using group funnel to you can generate a lot of leads what is the process that you need in order to generate a lot of leads and then show them how group how you use group funnel how easy it is to use group funnel to actually create this whole system like what is needed to generate leads right you need all these five steps and then after that you talk about how putting all these five steps together and and then at the end why use group funnel to build all these five steps because it was so fast everything is integrated already and then give them an irresistible offer at the end then all the agents will start, start to join right and and groups of people who are not just in real estate industry you can go into uh like uh business federations or like you know chamber of commerce or even into like uh bni business networking international for people who are all traditional business owners and they can do a talk on behalf of them to show them why online funnel is really powerful right now for all all kind of business just to add value to them all right then of course the the tools that they can do that is that they can use screw funnel to do that mm. like you know it's like selling them the goal yeah it's like selling okay selling them the idea of online funnel online funnel is the goal the opportunity of the goal and your group funnel is the show goal. i mean during the 1948 mm. or 1848 gold rush type california gold rush the ones that make the most money were not the one that were digging for gold were not the one that found the goal they, they were the ones that sold the show goal. <laughs> All right, group funnel is a showboat, right? <laughs> mm, okay. Yeah. So, so that, yeah. So for me, ahead. I do a lot of, to build my business. The best way is I do a lot of collaborations with people mm -hmm. who already yeah, have definitely. a existing group, but they don't. They are not an expert in the area, but they have customers who may be interested in the area mm -hmm. that they're not covering, and they feel that hey, yeah, if you go in and add value to my people. And you could sell something that I don't offer, and I get paid commission for doing that. I don't mind. It's a win for everyone. Okay, that's a very good angle to go for. So, guys, if you're watching this round, if any questions, feel free to please leave them into the chat because as you yeah, can so you might want to write see. down your dream fifty collaborators mm. rather than your dream fifty individual customers. <laughs> Mm, yes, that's a very good thing. So definitely, if any questions, feel free to put it in. And as I agree with what Winston is saying, 
uh, if you want to grow fast, right, don't just work for, you know, try to sell, 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 because that's a very individual level. But if you're able to find people to collaborate together with, uh, you'll be able to reach onto their list of people that they have already spent time and effort to build upon. And you're both going to be win-win. So, and agree with what Simon's saying, let's sell those shovels. <laughs> okay, definitely, Simon. So, all right. So, okay, in that case, because um, that if, if let's say we are starting to build your own team, okay, just like how you have, uh, when you are set, you're in your business, you are starting to have your own team as they were starting to grow. And I'm pretty sure you also have certain uh, performance issues. Some of them perform, some of them don't. So in this case, now, how would you be able to get your sales teams uh, to, to perform? It's inevitable. Uh, some will perform, some will not perform. It's inevitable because everybody comes from different walks of life and and think about it, right? There are some people who have a lot of experience uh, with online marketing, bought a lot, lot of courses already online, devour a lot of courses, and still do not get any doubts. You know, so there will there are people out there that's not going to be able to perform. You're just going to accept that as a, it's you know the numbers are eighty twenty rule still applies. Mm. Yeah, but you just grow the 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 bigger eighty twenty. <laughs> just mm. grow a bigger eighty twenty. Okay, so so in this case, if you want to get your sales team performing, uh, okay, okay, right. then there will definitely be some stragglers. There will be the people who won't perform as well. Uh, then how would you be able to help them to kind of move together? I think you were earlier you mentioned a little bit about uh, yeah, rewards about, and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, of course, recognition. Uh, you know, small milestone recognition. Uh, and also like uh, results oriented action takers. You know, those you got to talk about. Like, hey, this week instead of motivating them. Like talking about motivating or teaching them how technically how to do this, how to do that, just gives them some action plan and something easy that they can go and do. You know, and say so this way, I'm gonna do this. I think the best leaders are people who who plow ahead first. They are like generals, right? They go outside and they go charge in front and they go and fight and they got the results, they come back and they show, see, see, I've done it. And who has done it as well? So, so that men- now they mentioned that because I think you there was interesting that you think you said earlier, there was that you use content to help people. So to you give them the shovels that you're you, so in this case to help your team. Yeah. So perform. basically, my team all uses content. Uh, use a lot of content marketing even for all their leads. So I mm. I create content for them, and then they share the content. Hmm. Okay, that's a yes. very interesting angle because I think a lot of leaders they. Uh, just you know, keep telling people to do stuff and just keep going, reaching out, but they don't have the necessary tools, so to speak. Ooh, yeah. And I think yeah. very interesting that you actually give them these tools, you create these tools, and you give it to them, and then you just go out. Because if it's just, especially now we live in this day and age of internet itself, right? Um, if you're doing it by yourself, it's tough. But if you're the same article, same tool, same video given to another two, three people, your efforts have doubled or tripled. And especially now because there's so many people, you're just getting your efforts multiplied. To yeah, a whole lot of people. That's right. It's a lot more effective than me having to run a Facebook ad on my own uh, with my content. I get my team to promote the content that I've created. Of course, now mm-hmm. I even outsource my content. I've also outsourced my copywriting. Mm. Okay. And that's, I think, a smarter thing to do because you have you have the resources necessary and you don't have to spend that much time to create something from scratch. You just need to vet as long as it passes your standard of quality, then you, they can use those tools very very interesting uh tip you share over here and I, personally i think this is something i i want to be imp- implementing a lot more so i right. really appreciate you shared this uh information i think we have, we have passed an hour already so we i think we have a few more questions to go and i think we might be able to finish this within one and a half hours <laughs> i <laughs> might be able to finish it now i was initially thinking you know this this talk might go on to about three four hours but I think we might be able to go in one and a half. Maybe, right? so maybe guys, those... we have time for questions and see. I don't know who, who else have any, any questions. That... Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so if any guys, if you're watching this right now, if any questions, feel free to pop them in the questions uh, in the comments below. We, as you can see, well, I bring them up all the time. So just bring them, leave the comments below and uh, we will have you bring, we come on to the show and we have a chat because one of the things that I really, we really enjoy is that, you know, if any questions, we will answer them straight up because Winston is the person who has a lot of ideas in his head and he's able to kind of free flow his answers out. But what's very interesting to me was that, uh, or rather I feel very encouraged by was that Winston is not a person that just be, because when I first met him, he didn't know me from the next person. But he was able to pour out a lot of his 
information, his knowledge, experience. And I felt very appreciative of that. And I was very inspired that he's someone like him was able to share with someone like me that we've never met before. It's only after that, you know, we got to spend a bit more time, especially because my first meeting, I blew him off. <laughs> right, Mr. I don't remember. The first meeting, I was like, I, I just like, sorry, Mr. I'm, I almost left. Can we rearrange? And you were so nice to kind of uh, uh, carry on to, yeah. to arrange. You know, I, 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 had one, I had one meeting from this guy and this guy, I, I think I also overslept on this guy. Uh, yeah. This guy owns Vodian. I don't know if you know Vodian. Vodian. Ah, yes, uh, I know Vodian. Yes, yes. Alvin, right? So he wanted to meet me, and he turned up at my brother's restaurant, and I overslept. <laughs> and then after that, right, he like totally unfriend me. Right <laughs> after that, he was so offended. <laughs> Even when I like I apologized back to him, really, I'm so sorry, right? He just had replied to me, and he just totally unfriend. <laughs> okay. Oh man, I I have a flip side because for mine was because. He, he, I, I tried to ask him for one of my shows. But, okay. was telling, just, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So anyway, he's uh, he's I think he's promoting his current book, his new books, uh, scaling, uh, five E scaling yeah. system right now. And yeah, uh, yeah I, I I've been trying to reach out to him, but I think it's too busy. So uh, yeah. that's why I have you here for now for to to join us to share your information, your tips, and I really appreciate. And interesting enough, we both talked also to the same person. There's so many things in common. It's ridiculous. Okay. No divine yeah, yeah. coincidence. I won't say ridiculous. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I so, think that you, uh, you used to, to work with uh, Johan as well, right? So that was yes, uh, that's I, another coincidence. <laughs> it is. It is a very interesting coincidence because I, having worked together with Johan, that's why I got to meet, meet together with uh, Simon Leong and also, of course, to rub shoulders a little bit with David Kavanaugh. And afterwards, eventually on Groove, we chat a little bit. I was on the show. Uh, we connected a little bit more there. And uh, yeah, so that's and afterwards. I started to get into the show. I uh, wanted to connect with more people. And uh, that's how it's somehow connected with you. I can't even remember why the first reason I connected with you, but uh, but I just wanted to connect anyway because one of the things I really felt was important to me was that I don't want to see people as just a st statistic. I wanted to get to know different people, but you responded back. And I think that was very interesting. You asked me why did I want to connect with you? Oh, yeah. And afterwards, I actually gave you an actual answer. I, I just, you know, I, I actually wanted because uh, when I wanted to connect with different people, very often it's just like, uh, what do you call it? They just see statistics. They're just like, right, let me add 1,000 people now. And afterwards, I'll just market to these people. And I, I, I kind of get the strategy of the shotgun, just boom, and then you fire and it's something, you get someone. But I'm, I, I like to build that relationship with different. That's my style as well. And I really appreciate that. I think for you, you you connected back. And afterwards, we, we chat. We spend a lot of time talking. I think uh, two, there were twice, I think, at least two different meetings. Yeah, we go to the same church too. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so and then the last time was my was my cell group leader. <laughs> and interestingly yes, enough, I'm working together with uh, his wife, and uh, not say working together, but we're in the same ministry, and his wife manages manages that ministry. So it's a very very <laughs> small so world. It's like I, I don't like, know if you can go back to Pastor Aries and ask. Do you know this guy called Winston? <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll ring. I'll let him know that afterwards. It's like oh, so many things in common. It's kind of I. I and okay, guys, when you're watching this, I got to be. This is really, really happened. Okay, on fifteenth of Feb. Okay, what happened was that my brother he had a stroke. Okay, and there was a new stroke. I kid you not. I kid you not. Okay, in the very same was it the same week, the same day itself, right? Yeah. Winston's father-in-law as well also had a stroke. And I, I when I heard that. I was I, I I I literally was right now. I'm just I I, I couldn't think. I I was un, I, <laughs> I I can't even put out words right now yeah, because it's like so many parallels. <laughs> yeah, there's so many parallels. It's it's unbelievable. It's really unbelievable. And <laughs> yeah, there was completely completely. We can't plan for such things, especially for such events like that. And I think that's one of the reasons why I feel there's a bit of there's definitely more than one connection with Winston for me. And uh, it's it's quite interesting to know that we have so much shared stuff. Not it's not those kind of meetings uh, when you know it's like oh we have so much things in common. This is literal like life outside of us has happened. That's so similar. So anyway, <laughs> I just wanted to throw it out there uh, that there's a lot of these interesting things that's happened in our life. Okay, let's let's come back. Uh, let's come back a little bit. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, yeah. You're right, Nicholas. God does work in mysterious ways. Okay, go that's okay, mysterious voice. Okay, so let's come back a little bit. Uh so this question I had, right? 
Um, yep. So we talk a little bit about sales, everything. Now, if let's say we were to come to this situation where uh, you were to train somebody, you want to tell them exactly how to achieve the goals, how to become as successful as you are or to get as close as they can. If you were to prescribe a process to replicate what you have achieved, right? What would that process be? Wow. I... How do I replicate this? <laughs> okay, the thing is, for me, <laughs> honestly, the real truth is, I stopped thinking about, I stopped believing that there's a formula, <laughs> to be mm. honest. Okay, okay. <laughs> because every, every I, I, can, I mean, I can give you a generic formula, right? To replicate success, but this generic formula has been repeated by many people in different ways, uh, different angle, but it's still the same thing. Right, it's mm -hmm. still it's still basic marketing one hundred and one stuff, right? Uh, right, maybe choosing a, a good market, but choosing a good market may not always be the the way. Sometimes it's you create a market, you know, that that nobody has thought of. Also, you know, that is uh, there are companies who have become successful at that, but the companies yeah. who also have to deal with that. It's hard to really really pinpoint, but I guess one of the things that I can't I I guess to make it simple for me is I think going out there and getting experience, I guess when you have so much experience, you just intuitively feel like this might work or this might not work. You know, so I feel that a lot of times is you got to find yourself, I don't know what kind of success you're looking for because I have got success in many different areas. Right? But all the success I've ever had has something to do with me being interested in entrepreneurship, me uh, being interested in, in, in marketing, having passion in marketing. And, and uh, yeah, basically it's just this too. And knowing that there must be a, and the hope that it, that it will always work out somehow. I don't know how, but there's always a, a new idea. There's always, yeah, always some way to work out. And, and because you believe there's always some idea, somehow, you know, things like that do come. Opportunities could do come looking at your door. And I think uh, there's one Russell Brunson, uh, it wasn't yes, Russell Brunson, but there was a quote uh, that said something along the line that uh, it would be a pity if opportunity comes knocking and they find a man wanting or they find a man not ready for it. Okay, it's, uh, mm -hmm. that's why I think. I mean, there's opportunities be... everywhere, everywhere right now. I mean, if you're talking about opportunities to make money, there's so many, mm -hmm. but that's just too generic already, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Nicholas says the best process to replicate is to build other people up by passing on your experience in relationship marketing. Mm, okay. Yeah, I, I, I guess, yeah. I guess you could you could do that. That is one way. Mm. Yeah, you pass on. I mean, if you're doing coaching business or you're doing a business where you want to be paid, a highly paid consultant or something like that, if you write up your, your experience, people look at your experience and realize that, hey, maybe you can help me out with that. Right? So... Mm. When you help other people, people will naturally think that they might want to work together with you. Mm. Okay. So I think what I've, 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 for me, what I've learned from you today is that you shared, and I think over the time that I spent together with you, some of the things that I've learned, uh, you, you, you base a lot of the things you do on, of course, very on biblical principles that you share with me on a separate occasion. And I think that's, a, that's interesting to know uh, as well. And also it's because when you're doing different things, you find you're not doing it all by yourself. You always, are always looking for leverage points. And like, for example, the, the example you shared earlier, which I think was phenomenal, was that you actually don't try to just do everything by yourself. You'll find people who have the, the list of people that you're looking for, the target, for example. And then you find ways to serve that those group of people. So it's a win-win for both sides. And I think that's a yeah. fantastic idea that a lot of people hear about it, but they don't actually put into practice. But you will put into practice and not only have you done that very well, you've actually achieved a hundred million dollars or generated a hundred million dollars in sales uh, for your business. And of course, through the years, you've generated a lot of income from multiple uh, industries. So it's not literally just one particular thing you've been working on. You've used the same principle and applied to different niches or niches, as some people say. So they apply in different fields, different yeah. areas. I mean, for real estate, I, I, I actually did not go into... I did not go into joint venture <laughs> for real estate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even, okay. it didn't occur to me to go into joint venture back then for real estate. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't so know why. The, the real estate is just the, the, the different one. Yeah, maybe, no, no, you can still do joint ventures. Like, for example, in real estate, if I would go back to real estate again, 
I would join venture with uh, like uh, maybe parenting groups, right? How do you do estate planning? How do you do like, I'll go in there and say, hey, you have a group of parents, right? And you are teaching them about parenting on, on PSLE strategies or whatever, right? So there are parents inside. So maybe I can do group on how do you do estate planning for your children or something like that. So, right. So, uh, okay. So that's an interesting thing. So for those who are, that means you find people again, finding the people who are, who have the kind of group of people that you want to serve the key people. Yes. So good point. Very good point. So in this case, and, it's a -win uh, and you can create a content that, that would be, that will create value even for their audience. Hmm. Okay. So content, uh, and of course, like what you said earlier, another very good idea that I really enjoyed is that you actually create tools for your team to use. So yep. it's not just telling them and do stuff. You actually give them the, the tools uh, to, be, to to help them to perform better. So it's not just leaving them to figure everything out themselves. Right. Okay. Very cool. All right. So, okay. In this case, I will ask you that this is the final few questions, okay, that I can ask you, right? This is really kind of asking about what you plan to do for the future. Now, if you were to... Uh, Okay, that, just ignore that graphic. The graphic didn't make sense. Right. <laughs> okay, so if you were advising a younger version of yourself today, okay, what would you say to yourself to reach a million people, to help a million people, to serve a million wow. people? Yeah, I know that's your goal. I, okay, first of all, I've not reached a million people. <laughs> so mm. I can't, I think this would, I would not be a, a good person to answer you that. <laughs> Probably you should ask, uh, us like the mindset of Mark Zuckerberg <laughs> or people who have really reached. I, I learned this something very interesting I can share with you that uh, I was, I think it was from Dr. Jordan Peterson that in over the course of our lifetime, right, the course of our lifetime is on average, we were, let's say we reached 1,000 people. I think to, to touch 1,000 different people is not very far-fetched over the course of our lifetime. And then if you think about it, that also means that they in their lifetime can reach 1,000 people. So a thousand people multiplied by a thousand people, you can reach a million people in your lifetime. Right. It's quite an amazing thing to think about. So if you were, that's, that's why I, went, I mean, you've already attained the financial goals that you can, you want to attain. Uh, a lot of people are, haven't reached that. But if you were to advise, let's say someone of yourself, someone like you, okay, who's starting out today, right now today, how can he or she attain his or her goals? To reach that million. Well, first of all, I, 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 I need to know who who is that person and what does he want, what's his strength, what's his weaknesses, you know, what does the what does the person want? Because there are some things like, for example, I can tell a person, like I just told you, right, I think you'll be a good fit to do real estate. It'll probably get you more income than, than you know, maybe other forms of business marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, but the thing is, uh, it's maybe it's just not cup, your, your cup of tea, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I think that there is no right one strategy, you should do affiliate marketing, you should do this, you should do that, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, if I, I can do that, then maybe I'm, I'm really God <laughs> to tell you that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think to reach mm -hmm. out, I think one of the things is maybe you can look at your gifts and your talent and, you know, ask yourself, where, where's your gift, your talent, and what are you passionate about? You know, what, what have you done or what have you, have, have you done that you were passionate about or what have you done, not done that you could be passionate about, but you have not done it yet to know whether you're passionate about it. Yeah. Example like my kids, right? I wouldn't tell my kids right now, hey, you know what? You should do internet marketing. Yeah, because it's cool. You know, YouTubers are making a lot of money with that. The eight-year-old Ryan guy, yeah, he's making 30 million. What are you guys doing? Mm -hmm. You're ready for me five. <laughs> <laughs> right? so, but but I guess I guess um uh, I think. Some people find their so-called their element at an earlier age. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just the Ryan guy just had the father. The father was also good at video editing, right? So yes, it was yes. like, I like the two together, right? <laughs> having two mm -hmm. together. Yeah. I mean, having a mentor, uh, a mentor is also good because the person has gone through some experience. Yeah. But having a mentor doesn't guarantee you success. It's, for example, the same it is with... Uh, Jesus, <laughs> he was the mentor of thousands of people who follow him or 12,000 people who follow him, right? But I mean, the, the one that significantly really spread the word was just Peter and John. 
or just two of them, right? I, even the classroom, you can see that a lot of people have a lot of mentors, you know, a lot of people follow a lot of gurus, but then not everybody became successful as well. I mean, you see this also in internet marketing, whether you, you paid money for the mastermind, I mean, you can pay six figure of mastermind. I've seen people who paid like mastermind groups and majority are still not going to be able to perform that way. Somehow, I don't know. It's just the, yeah, it's just the way it is. So, but of course, uh, having a good mentor is great because they do tell you their experience. So you do know how to, you can like shortcut, prevent yourself some shortfall, uh, you know, some pitfalls. And, you know, they may even direct you, give some ideas that you never thought of that, yeah, that has done, has worked well for them and you could be something that you can try. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even if you try, you might not get it right still. <laughs> Just so you know. Yeah. Okay. But Good work. So it do help you in a, in a sense. Like for me, a lot of my mentors, I, I didn't actually have a mentor, like a mentor that I look up to and say, hey, you know, I, you are the one that is going to help me. My only mentor is... is is God, right? <laughs> and it's, it's Him. I only pray that He opens the door for me. I only pray, I only know that, that tell myself to, that, to know that all that He has done for me, all that He has, he has done to open doors for me, for real estate, for me going to real estate, it's all none of my doing, but it's all Him. I, I, I want to acknowledge that. Uh, so I don't become a person that's too proud that one day, I mean, there are people who are so proud that when they fail, they literally go and commit suicide. I mean, a lot of people do that. I mean, I've seen people who do that, right? But for me, is I know that all I do is I pray for God for failure, uh, for, not for failure, for, for open doors for me, all right? Because all the success that I've ever had, it was all God's open doors for me. Opportunities just open up for me to walk through. And I walked through a little bit. I didn't walk through in fully knowing that it was going to be successful at real estate, right? I didn't go in and knowing that I was going to do a hundred. I didn't even, even the current thing I, I'm doing right now. I don't even think that I was in the beginning. I was confident I was going to get a hundred million dollars in sales from that. No, there was, there was, I wasn't even confident in doing that. But every step that I made, God made it uh, open doors and it was working. The strategy was working. And that made me like continue to move forward. And it seems to be working and got ex more excited. And I just keep moving forward. I mean, that was, that was for me. I can only speak from my own personal experience. and um, But of course, there's always generic strategies that have worked. I mean, copywriting, human psychology. Of course, people always say that human psychology don't go far too much far away from uh, what people are susceptible to be influenced by. Uh, there's always this uh, generic thing, generic marketing principles that you can still use. It will still work. Um, but you still have to do some tweaking to get it right. Yeah. So a lot of times, uh, it's just the experience that everyone has to go through. Uh, yeah. But having a mentor still doesn't guarantee that you will succeed. Okay. If, you, if that is true, you just go to all the people who paid top money for mentors, for like uh, even teachers, tuition teachers. I mean, even if a great teacher is in a class, guess how many of them actually made it, like did very well. Mm. Okay. All right. So then in this case, also the other one is, uh, we are come, I think we're coming to one and a half. I also want to respect your time. Is that, you know, is there any parting words before we end? And how can people reach you, man? Uh, okay, easy. Uh, Facebook, right? <laughs> you have my name. So that's not easy. Uh, I think parting words. I, I think maybe the key question you, you asked me, what is one last question you would like to ask? Yeah, I don't know if you guys have any questions. All right. What is one last question you would like to ask? Uh, if I could dig out from my experience. And then, you know, after talking to you, I've been very candid uh, about everything, uh, about, mm -hmm. yeah, my perspective, my experience. So you know, I've been really candid about it. So if you if you have any last questions that you want to ask, right, I think you'll oh, feel so free to Okay. So oh, if, uh, if, you well, yourself, if anybody in the audience you want to ask, feel free to ask. But if there's any question that I want to ask, I think I asked you a fair amount already. <laughs> there's a lot of questions I've asked. Okay, let's say, actually, and, you were, uh, this was the last time you were ever going to talk to me. <laughs> Are you ever going to see ah. me? Okay. <laughs> wow. Okay. So if it's the last time, if I ever going to see you, what I'm going to ask you. Okay. In this case, I probably ask, um, how happy do you think you are? I think I'm very blessed. I think I'm very blessed. And I think that I'm very blessed because I can give you all the reasons why I feel blessed. 
well, of course, other than the passive income, but I don't have passive income like some people make billions of dollars. I don't do that. I don't have that. But that's okay, right? But I feel blessed because as I look back to where I was in prison and where I was in the past right now, compared to now, of course, I feel really blessed from where I was. I mean, one of the ways to, to do that. I mean, we're all going to die one day, right? So we're all going to die one day. And sometimes this perspective needs to be reminded every now and then so that we can be happy. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So look at what are the things that I'm thankful for. I'm thankful for my wife. She's still with me. The two years that I was in prison, she, I mean, she stood around with me. And today, she's still an amazing wife. I still have an amazing wife. I have three amazing kids that I love them to bits that that there's so much love in the house, you know, and, and, and every day when they come back and I get to see them coming through the door every day, every day when I see them, I never fail to feel happiness. I never fail to have this thing like this, uh, I'll say it's as if I still see them born for the first time every day. <laughs> that same joy is still there every day when they come back from school. Yeah. And I'm very blessed that I have, like, I mean, uh, I have, they're really good kids, lah, I would say. My wife did a really good job and they're, they're really good kids. Uh, I'm very proud of them. Yeah. I mean, think about it. I'm very proud of them because they could do stuff that I couldn't do when I was young. <laughs> like my, my youngest daughter, she would like, you know, uh, she would like, um, she would know how to bathe herself, you know, and change herself when she was already three years old. And since they were going to school at seven years old, and they had to wake up 5 a.m. every morning, right? So the thing is, I don't even remember myself waking up 5 a.m. growing up, okay? They wake up at 5 a.m. on their own, okay? And some adults should be ashamed to hear this. <laughs> they wake up at 5 a.m. on their own. They never have to wake me up, <laughs> right? They make their own breakfast. Okay, they put on their own uniform. They 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 tie help tie each other plait each other's hair, and then after that they only wake me up like just to for a brief moment to just pray over them. That's it, <laughs> and then I go wow. back and sleep <laughs> before they head on to school. That's... Okay, so and I then think they I, do I, that I, since I... The day one that they had to go to school when they were seven years old at five a.m. They had to wake up on their own. They do everything on their own. So I don't make breakfast for them. I don't wake up in the morning for them. I know a lot of, most parents do, but I'm so proud that I, me and my wife, we don't. We're lazy parents. <laughs> <laughs> but I think uh, the question of being happy, and I think you really answered that. Wow. They cook in the morning. <laughs> they cook. I mean, simple stuff like, like they fry eggs, they make their own smoothie, they, they, they toast their own bread, and then they just you know make their own drink for themselves, their own breakfast on their own self. I never that's, had to make breakfast. That's for them. very impressive. Yeah, most people can't even do that. Uh, or they yeah. won't do that, right? But they how how young they are they? Again? they won't. <laughs> how young are they again? Uh okay, my my eld my youngest is seven. My twins are like uh ten right eleven right now. Seven eleven. Yeah. Okay. Seven eleven. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and my so, eleven years old they've been doing that for the last four years. So uh, I've not heard many parents whose children wake up at 5 a.m. and do everything on their own. That's such such blessing, man. That's such blessing. And uh, oh yeah, then I have this question from Nicholas. Thank you, by the way. Thank you so much for answering that question for me. Uh, that was I think I also got something from that question. Uh, this Nicholas has a question: Is what gets you down in the marketing game? Uh, is what gets everyone down is when you have an expectation that hey, if I implement this strategy, you know, let's you know, I think it's gonna work. And I tried this strategy and I tried and it's like, oh, it didn't, shucks, it didn't really work, work it out. And you feel disappointed again and then you try another strategy. Uh, but the thing is, the whole thing about this entrepreneur game is that you're always trying again and again and to, to somehow get it right. It, it's how the way life is, right? Life isn't about you can't do it once and you just get it right. A lot of times when the people do it once they get it right, it's like, for example, I did my SingaporeBunglows.com, right? and I generate leads and close my first six-figure deal, did I know that it was going to work? Mm, could I have been disappointed if it didn't work? I could have, but it worked. So when it worked, it's like, wow, now everybody looks at this thing and they're like, wow, the strategy works. 
<laughs> mm. Right, but okay, yeah, but I, I, and and somehow, somehow you, I think that the disappointment, the, the thing is that you got to be okay with disappointment. I mean, someone actually asked, said in Twitter, say some, uh, I think replied to Elon Musk and and say, you know, you must have be having a good life up there, and you know, having all the wealth and everything, you know, because. Elon replied and said, you know, well, it's great. It's a lot of high, a lot of low and relentless stress. <laughs> mm, it is. It's, uh, Elon, Elon is, uh, I was reading, uh, I, was, I, was, I was reading, I was listening to an audio book and it was very interesting to hear about his story and how he's, he's actually quite an interesting child because since he was a kid in school, he actually read all the books in the library. He read it. He read it so much, he actually requested his school to actually get more books so that he can actually finish reading them. And he was, uh, but it was tough because his, uh, if I don't remember wrongly, he had, uh, uh, it was mostly just his mom taking care of him. Uh, if I don't remember wrongly, if I don't, because there was quite some time back. And, uh, he had a very was, curious mind. Very curious mind. Very, very, very curious, curious mind. mind. Yes. Yes. And he continuously learned and tried different things and, he, he wanted to get into gaming, but he realized that from all the different books they read and different stuff, he realized that gaming wasn't wasn't going to be the thing that would change the world. So he went to do something else instead. So, yeah, interesting that we we went towards talking about Elon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, interesting. But yeah, but a lot of times you have to go out and and just try it out and you know try all kinds of strategies and believe that you will eventually get it right mm. somehow. Okay. Yeah. But certain principles that I've shared, like about leveraging, about working together, you know, joint venture effort, you know, this this has always worked. So find something that you can be a strength with that is not a strength of someone else that has a group. Like for example, for you, right, yours is significant strategy, right? It's like what's the strategy to create group, yeah. to become significant, right? All right. So this strategy about significance includes like con includes creating significant content. Creating a, a significant brand, right? That 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 applies. That can apply to real estate agents too, right? That can also apply to prop insurance or even into uh, affiliate marketers, network marketers, even into coaching coaches, consultants. I I I think yeah. So if, if there are groups of people who are like that, and there are associations that have group of people like that, and you you can collaborate with them, tell them that about what you do. You know that is like like creating brand significance, which they never really give it a thought about. It's not their strength. Their strength is just teaching people sales. Mm. I think one of the, the 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 one of the reasons why I really liked you as a person is that you just want to keep giving ideas over. You just want to keep sharing your ideas. You just want to help different people. And uh, I think you you were talking about different kinds of stuff different ideas that are thrown at you just keep giving back different ideas and i think that's one of the more uh, uh, uh at least for me i feel very grateful and i get very good i get i feel better every time i get to chat with you because i always getting i always walk away with some ideas i walk away with something that i can try out i can experiment and i just want to appreciate you uh so much for that and i think one of the parting words if i right. may right that you left is that yeah. you know you find your strength and build upon it i think this was one of the, the statements you just made and there's a lot of uh gold a lot of nuggets of wisdom that came out from your mouth and uh, you shared a lot of very powerful things and i think one of the things which a lot of people tend not to see is they they don't they forget their natural strength and then they go and try to do something to chase the rainbow to try to get stuff but it's actually within them and um and i think based on your story where you shared from the very beginning of how you came from a situation where you wanted money and then afterwards you did something that you didn't that wasn't right and you and you paid a price for it and now you've, you've come to find your way to leveraging your natural strengths, leveraging on being authentic to yourself and being real and also and then building upon that to building a, a brand and building a very successful business of 100M and more. And right. More. Right. Yeah. So thank you so much for that. And uh, Nicholas is over here saying, many, not many shows you watch online. Asher and his guests are the rare exception. Always a great show. Real value for the real world. Thank you so much, Nicholas, for that. And right, thank uh, you. Ujan on YouTube as well. Thanks for joining in the show. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah. So okay, man. I think this is a right. good note to leave it on. <laughs> All right. So everyone have a blessed night, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. 
Yeah, okay. Stay online, sir, and afterwards we'll, yeah. we'll chat out after this, yeah, okay? Yeah. All right, say bye-bye, yeah. and I'll take it off the screen. Bye, everyone. God bless. Okay. God bless. All right, guys, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining the show. It's one hour and 40. This is definitely the longest one, uh, the longest show I've, I've done with a guest. Well, of course, because Winston has been giving so much, and his story is quite amazing, just like Zhong Jie is now saying over there. Thank you so uh, Thank you for the sharing. Thank you for joining the show as well, Zhong Jie, and for every single person who has joined onto the show. With that said, this is the end of it. Thank you so much for watching.